Hi, here's a walkthrough of six tips to help you build hyperintelligence cards with advanced capabilities. In this video, I'll cover how to build derived metrics using the card editor interface, helping you take the insights on your cards to the next level. We'll also explore how to replace a dataset to seamlessly transfer an existing card design to a new data sample. Implement pattern matching to enable cards with large datasets to be visible on websites or in Microsoft Office Outlook. Add thresholds to your data so that you can visualize information solely based on the underlined color for the keywords that are highlighted by hyperintelligence. Use access control lists, or ACLs, to configure levels of action-based privileges for users and groups. And, finally, we'll show you how to enable allowed URLs to help you control which websites a card is visible on. Let's get started! Previously, I created a customized card detailing product sales information. My current dataset includes metrics for revenue, cost, and units sold and in stock, but not profit margin and inventory turnover. So, let's create derived metrics to show profit margin and inventory turnover on this hyperintelligence card. First, click New Metric at the top left of the card editor, or right-click on a metric in the dataset pane and select Create Metric. Then, add in the calculation for the metric, validate the calculation, give the metric a name, profit margin in this case, and click Save. Now, let's drag and drop to add this new metric to the card. Now I can follow the same easy steps to create a second derived metric for inventory turnover and add it to the card. Next, I'd like to update the card to include more attributes like the item's color, device type, and screen size. Since these attributes are not included in the existing dataset for this card, I've created a second dataset that includes these details. Now, Let's replace the existing dataset for my card with the new dataset. First, click on Replace Dataset, then choose the new dataset, and click Select. Now, look through the list to choose which attributes and metrics to map between the old and new datasets. In this case, all of the existing attributes and metrics are also in the new dataset, so they're automatically mapped to themselves. Let's choose to keep existing definitions for our derived metrics. Then, click Update to apply our changes. Now, let's add more rows to our card's list widget, then drag and drop to add these new attributes to the card. This new dataset contains more data than before. In fact, it now has over a million rows. When combined with exact keyword matching, this analysis will exceed the data storage limits for hyperintelligence via the web browser extension and the Office Outlook add-in. So, let's set up pattern matching to ensure our new, much larger dataset for the hyperintelligence use case works properly everywhere where users may want to view this card. In order to use pattern matching, our keyword attribute needs an attribute form that follows a set pattern, such as product IDs in our example. This helps streamline processing for large datasets so that the card can be seen when browsing the internet, checking emails, and performing a variety of other day-to-day -day functions. To set up pattern matching, first click on the alternate keyword matching icon and select pattern matching. Notice that Workstation automatically detected a pattern in our dataset. However, let's walk through how to manually set up pattern matching to help hyperintelligence efficiently store and process large datasets in case the pattern wasn't detected automatically. To manually set up pattern matching, first hover over the attribute form and click the edit icon on the right to modify the pattern and start over from scratch. Since the product IDs in our dataset always begin with exactly six numeric digits, let's click on the plus icon to add a rule, then select numbers and enter six next to count. Further, since the six digits at the start of each ID can include any combination of numbers, let's keep the default parameter set at contains and 0 to 9. Now, since the next sequence in each product ID contains three alphabetic characters, let's set up the second part of the pattern by adding a new rule, selecting letters, and entering 3 for count. Similarly to how we set up the numeric sequence, since the letter sequence can also contain any letters in any order, let's keep the default parameters of contains and A to Z. Now, click Save and Apply to save our pattern matching rules for this card. Now, remember when we created a new derived metric for profit margin? Let's apply a threshold based on this metric that changes the color of the header and underline for each card based on parameters that we set for the profit margin values. To help my executives quickly grasp the effectiveness of each item that we sell, Let's define thresholds that will enable the card header to appear green when a product's profit margin is very high, yellow if we'd consider it moderately high, orange if it is moderately low, and red if it is very low. First, let's click on the card header, and in the format panel next to thresholds, select the edit icon. Then, 
Next to metrics, let's select the metric which we'd like to apply these thresholds on. Profit margin, in this case. Now, let's configure the threshold ranges based on our parameters, such as the highest, medium high, medium low, and lowest 25% in profit margin. Now, select the colors we'd like to associate with each range, and then click Apply. Finally, let's save the card and close the card editor. Now, let's configure limited permission levels associated with other users of this card by creating ACLs, or access control lists, for our hyperintelligence card. Since everyday business users should be able to view but not edit the sales data displayed on this card, I want to provide them view-only access. To do so, start by right-clicking on the card, then select Get Info. Next, navigate to Security Access and change the selected permissions for the Everyone group to View Only. However, some members of my organization do need permissions to do more than just view these cards. Since my fellow financial analysts will need to be able to both edit and configure permissions on this card, I will click the plus icon to add the financial analyst group and select full control to grant them this permission. Similarly, HR analysts may need to edit these cards but not configure permissions, so I'll add the HR analyst group and provide them the modify permission level. Next, since my users should only be able to see this card that includes sensitive sales data over secure internal only sites like Salesforce, Let's enable the allowed websites on which the users we authorized in the previous step can view this card. First, navigate to allowed websites on the left. In the freeform text box, let's add in the website URLs that we want to limit the visibility of this card to, such as Salesforce, SharePoint, and Workday, separated by commas. Note that I can use asterisks to represent wildcards for the website's protocol and subdomain, such as asterisk colon slash slash asterisk dot lightning dot forest dot com. This helps account for users who may use both secure HTTPS and standard HTTP connections to access Salesforce data, and would also account for potential changes to my organization's subdomain for our Salesforce website. Now, let's click Add. This saves my list of URLs as individual allowed websites that I can edit or delete from this list as needed. I can also multi-select websites from this list and copy them to my clipboard, to easily copy and paste them into the allowed websites list for other cards in my organization's environment. Now, let's click OK to save changes. Now that we've added several advanced capabilities to kick this card up a notch, let's view this card in action on Salesforce. First, notice that since we did not add Google as an allowed website in the previous step, the card appears as inactive in our web extension when we search on Google for one of our product IDs. However, once we move over to an allowed website like Salesforce, not only is our card visible, but so are some of the advanced capabilities that we added, such as the profit margin and inventory turnover derived metrics, as well as the multicolored thresholds which we've configured to intuitively indicate the products for which we have high, medium high, medium low, and low profit margins. <laughs>